SMT Nation, we are back. Nation, in this video, I'm going to tell you all about what Verizon is doing. Verizon might be one of the most interesting companies in the industry based on what they're doing with their network and how they plan on reaching folks with it and selling it to people and them getting access to it. Now, Verizon, long standing reputation as one of the best network builders in the country. Some would argue they're the best, uh, you know, and, and, and the largest and those types of things. But probably the most important thing that we've seen over the last couple of years is building out C-band N77. It is their most critical capacity component on their network to date based on reach and capacity. So uh, this article from Dano kind of highlights all that. And I have the main points from the article and, you know, all of this kind of coming from this investor conference that took place uh, today at the time of this recording in regards to it. So C-band. Uh, N77, the 3700 frequency, Verizon spent a lot of money, right? We're talking about $50 billion in spectrum and then building it, you know, the additional CapEx that it requires to deploy all these new radios and, and things of that nature. So it's a nationwide capacity layer for them. The millimeter wave piece of their network obviously has more capacity, but just simply does not have the reach. So kind of phases right the, the whole c-band build out process has been an ongoing thing since like basically 2021 and since 2021 the focus the emphasis has always been pops coverage and what we mean by pops is points of presence point of presence is a metric in which you take the number of people that are within certain markets they get assigned like a, a certain pops value right or points of presence so like a, a market like new york city has a lot of pops a market like Chicago or LA, they have a lot of pops, right? Millions. Uh, so that's kind of how that works, right? And and that was the main metric for the last few years. It was like how many millions of pops coverage does a carrier have with their mid-band 5G build? So they would hit like milestones, like 100 million pops, 150 million pops, 200, 250, and whatever they're at, you know, whatever it may be. The, the way that you hit those pops is just by building in cities, right? That you got the most people there. So there comes a point, I think, when you get over a certain amount of pops, a certain threshold, it's like, you know, the network is no longer a city build. It's now kind of expanding from outside of that, right? Kind of going into the suburban areas and going into the rural areas and upgrading and building tower sites and, you know, putting on these additional frequencies, right? So 80% of the country lives in cities. It makes sense that that's where they start their build, but they've moved on from that, right? And now, at least I, I'd say probably since 2023, like the end of 2023, Verizon has started to change their philosophy on C-band. They've shifted from a coverage kind of, you know, approach to a more like depth of the build to where it's meaningful to their business, right? Not just covering pops, but satisfaction and revenue, right? And I'm going to explain what all that means. So Verizon... You know, the, the CEO speaking on it, I, and I'm just taking some pieces and parts of what he said. He said, covering the entire country isn't our focus currently, right? Just talking about right now at this moment in time. Verizon will, at least according to them, and we can hold them to that, right? Verizon said they will put C-Band on all their sites, right? They will put C-Band in all the necessary locations and all of those types of things. They're just, it looks like they're going to be prioritizing, right? They're shifting away from the pops, of coverage right they'll they'll do it eventually they'll get to it but they're looking at beyond geography right they're going to be looking at c-band efforts where they can monetize and by monetizing we're talking about ways that they can keep customers right it's a retention strategy better network experience means customers aren't likely to churn and you know additionally you got upsells you got premium upsells they've given us the metrics on those they have higher premium upsell rates where areas where they have c-band the fixed wireless access becomes an additional service that customers can add to their existing accounts and they get Verizon home internet customers all the time that aren't even wireless customers, right? They probably want to start connecting those two things. Uh, and then of course, like customer retention, churn, satisfaction, the things we kind of talked about. This is a really, really important metric for them. C-band equates and correlates to success for Verizon with the premium upsell. And that's really been a focus for them it's margins and profits and those types of things uh so verizon is going to deploy c-band in you know in a nationwide scale that's not really the question they're just going to be doing it 
in different ways than I think people originally perceived. What I expect in 2025, right, this upcoming year, is there may still be some areas and pockets outside of major cities that are still waiting for C-band, and they'll get it eventually. But you're going to see cities, and you're going to see metro areas that are going to be getting overlays of C-band, small cells with C-band, additional macros with C-band, and you'll say, well, this doesn't make any sense. How are you going to put all this additional depth-based C-band over these like rural areas who haven't had anything yet? And guys, it's just the monetization strategy. They can better monetize C-band in depth in places where the return on invested capital makes sense. It's just going to be a monetary decision. That's what it always has been. That's what it's always going to be. So their philosophy is eventually going to get to all the locations across the country with C-band, but they are going to prioritize areas where the return is simply better, where the fixed wireless access return is better, where the private networking is better, where the you know, customer retention is required, uh, where the premium upsell is happening. And of course, they're analyzing all that with AI and machine learning and how they should deploy all the sites and where, you know, locations and which pops deserve the most attention and investment. You know, I, I found it really interesting. Verizon said in their disclosure, because I want to give you guys confidence that Verizon will eventually go completely geographically nationwide with this stuff. They said that Verizon will have 70% overlay the same with AWS when it comes to C-band by the end of this year. And in my experience, I can actually see this. There's not a single tower site here in the Cleveland market that doesn't have N77. That's a macro site, right? And the small cells are the only ones that don't have C-band. They do have AWS, right? So you see kind of where this is going. And, and, and kind of to take this next level, they said 80 to 90% of the AWS overlay for C-band will happen next year. So we're talking about over the course of the end of 2025, you will have matching C-band to AWS, band 66, right? The 1.7, 2.1 gigahertz band. It's going to be matching with, with C-band and AWS, right? At, at 80 to 90%, which means it's almost at parity. Okay, so this is really exciting. This is really interesting. One more little tidbit that I found, uh, and I was completely unaware of this. Apparently, Verizon has been deploying some radios on their network that can only utilize 60 or 100 megahertz of N77. I had no clue. I, I don't know why. I don't know if that was a manufacturer issue, uh, a supply constraint issue, if that's like the Gen 1 radios, you know, or, or whatever the case may be, but... Apparently, there is additional levers to pull where Verizon can create more capacity because in some areas, they still aren't even utilizing the full assets, uh, the full spectrum licenses for N77. Because if they're going from 60 or 100 megahertz to 160 or 200 in some places, I mean, they can create much more capacity with additional bandwidth. And of course, there's fiber circuits and other things that they can do. But uh, it is very clear. C-band is absolutely the nationwide capacity asset for Verizon. They are going to make it meaningful. It is going to carry the mail on the Verizon network forever. And it's probably going to be how they monetize the network moving forward. A lot of people make a big stink about low band and, and you need low band and your 5G anchors. I have no idea what you're talking about. It is very clear. It is abundantly clear to me. The only way Verizon sees monetization is through C-band and that's going to be the way for them moving forward and they are very serious about it and these are great updates from Verizon great disclosures great article from Dana I'll link it for you guys it'll be in the description but uh, that gets you guys in the know of kind of what's going on I do think unfortunately the title is not very accurate I think Verizon kind of shifted away from the whole like coverage pops last year right like that once they hit 200 225 million pops 250 whatever it's been about depth ever since, right? We'll continue to follow these stories and more, but comment, drop me a line. Let me know what you guys think about Verizon's strategy and if you think it's going to be effective for them, if you agree or disagree with it. Sound off in the comment section below. You are the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard.